with a guy like that. another installment of Tough Theological Questions, and this one comes from Cooper. Cooper asked a question about sin and its consequences, and he said, do you think that there is ever a sin that, one, a Christian can commit, and first, if they commit that sin, it's proof that they're not a Christian, and two, if they commit that sin and feel no guilt about it, does this say that they're eternally damned? Well, first, Cooper, thank you for asking this question. I have answered questions similar to this in the past, but I'm going to go ahead and answer this one again because it's that important of a question. And I want to set the stage for the answer. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to point you to two verses from the Bible that I think already answer this question but these verses are not controversial, but people struggle to understand exactly what the verse implies. It's easy to understand what the verse says. It's really challenging to understand the implications of this verse. But before I do that, I think I need to get to a discussion about sin. Cooper, you use the language Christian sin. Now, all people are born into sin. It's part of the human nature. It comes from our first parents, Adam and Eve. And because Adam and Eve made a deliberate choice to disobey God and sin, they have been infected with the disease of sin and they pass that disease on to every child after them, meaning every human being on the, world, on the planet has committed sin or is infected with the disease of sin. This language comes directly from the Bible. All have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God, either actual sin or the imputed sin that was passed on to us. But for a lot of people who don't spend time in church, or maybe you went to the kind of church where people just beat the Bible, uh, beat you up with the Bible, I want to make sure that we understand what this word sin means. Sin means God had a standard that he expected people to live up to, a marker that this is what all people should live up to. And if you don't live up to that marker in any shape or fashion whatsoever, it is a sin. The word sin literally means to miss the mark or to miss the target. And the target that God created all human beings to live up to, Adam and Eve were perfectly capable of living up to. Adam and Eve missed it, and every human being that's ever lived since then, except for the Lord Jesus Christ, who was born different than all human beings, didn't have an earthly father, but was miraculously born by a virgin. All human beings have sin, they're born into it. By the way, that marker that God expects all people to live up to is 100% moral perfection for an entire lifetime. Meaning, if you think you can be good enough to outweigh, the good will outweigh your sin, well, you don't understand what sin is because sin is 100% not living up to 100% moral perfection for your entire lifetime. That's why nobody is perfect. That's why nobody can say, I am perfect. That's why Jesus can say, let the one of you that doesn't have sin throw the first stone, because Jesus knows our heart. Now that we understand what sin is, not living up to God's standard of 100% moral perfection for a lifetime, now that we get that, is there a sin that Christians can commit that shows that maybe they're not a Christian and no uh, conviction from the Holy Spirit shows that maybe they're not on their way to heaven? Okay, you've just introduced a variable. Cooper to this question that makes it a little bit more complex. It's not more challenging, but it is more complex because when the Holy Spirit does a radical, miraculous, supernatural transformation in the human heart, he takes a heart of sin and he gives us a heart for Christ or a heart of God. Now, are we still tempted to sin? 
Absolutely. Jesus was tempted in every way a man can possibly be tempted to sin, and yet he didn't give in to it. When the Holy Spirit supernaturally changes our hearts and we become Christians, it's not just going to church. It's not just praying a prayer. It is a miraculous, radical heart change that the Holy Spirit's done. When that happens, do Christians naturally have to fall into sin? No. Do Christians often choose to give in to temptation and let temptation lead them into sin, even though their heart has been changed by Jesus? Yes, happens all the time. Is there a sin that can be so bad for a Christian that if they do this sin, it's proof that they're not a Christian? And if there's no guilt or conviction because of the sin, that's proof that their hearts were never changed in the first place. Do you see what I just did there? We're not talking about whether or not a Christian can sin. That, I've already just stated, is absolutely possible. We're talking about was the heart really changed in the first place? Meaning, are you really, really a Christian in the first place? And now the conversation is different. Now we're just not only talking about sin, now we're talking about whether or not you're genuinely, radically born again by the Holy Spirit. And that is a whole different conversation. But I want to point you, Cooper, and anybody else who's listening, to these two verses from Mark chapter 3. You see, in these two verses, I think it's the definitive answer to the question, Christian or not, can you sin and that sin be so bad that you're not going to heaven because of it? And the answer, according to Mark chapter 3, verses 28 and 29, Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for all sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. This is Jesus' words written and read to God or to the whole crowd listening to him. But, verse 29, whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of of an eternal sin. These two verses say two very powerful things that I think directly answer your question, Cooper. Can you commit a sin that is so terrible that it's proof that you're not a Christian and that you're not on your way to heaven? Yes, according to Jesus, that verse 29, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is a sin that is so terrible that you are never forgiven. This is the language. Not won't be forgiven in the future. The language is never have been, never will be forgiven. And you're under the eternal curse of sin, according to verse 29. That eternal curse of sin, of course, is hell. But be very, very careful with the verb tenses here. The never uh, can never be forgiven basically says it never happened in the past and you never were a Christian. Yeah, maybe you had some flutter in your stomach. Yeah, maybe you did the very thing that a priest or, or a pastor or a religious leader asked you to do. Yeah, maybe you even went through all of the steps that normal other, that other people go through, but that is not proof that you're a Christian. The proof that you're a Christian is that the Lord Jesus Christ has radically changed you and that you remain faithful for the rest of your life. So what Jesus is saying is, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, that's proof that you were never a Christian in the first place. But Cooper, you may be asking, wait a second, that's not the question I asked. I asked, can a Christian do something that's so bad that now God won't accept them and that if the Holy Spirit doesn't change their heart, they're not on their way to heaven. And my answer, according to verse 28, is no. In fact, verse 28 is very, very specific. All sins, all manner of blasphemies, basically everything that you can think of and the stuff that you can't even imagine, God can, God will forgive it, not because of your prayer, not because of being a good person, not because of doing what a church leader told you to do. He can and he will forgive it because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done to pay for that sin on the cross. All sin can, and, and, and the way that this is verse is worded, will be forgiven by the Lord Jesus Christ if you genuinely have been born again. But the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit 
phrase is what causes a lot of people confusion. A lot of people want to know, what exactly does this mean? And I think there are implications here that are massive to heaven and hell. Literally, eternity rides on the implications here. And to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, quite literally, is to deny the Holy Spirit when he is telling you, Jesus loves you, Jesus wants to clean up your sin, Jesus died in your place so that you don't have to die because the wages of sin is death, and Jesus is inviting you to have a personal, radical heart change with him right now. And if you say, nah, I'm good, that right there is the one sin that for all of eternity you can't be forgiven for. Because if you won't accept the blood of Jesus as payment for your sins, then absolutely nothing else can possibly pay for your sins. You will pay for your sins and you will spend an eternity paying for your sins. Verse 28 says, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how serious or how egregious. It can and it will be paid for by the blood of Jesus. Verse 29, but you do this thing and it's never forgiven. You have not been forgiven in the past. You will not be forgiven in the future. And this one thing is to say, I don't need Jesus. I'm good enough that I can figure out my way into heaven on my own. That's the one sin there is no hope for. That's the one sin that a person will pay eternal consequences for. In fact, literally, everyone that will be separated from God forever in hell is going to be sent there for the exact same reason of saying, I don't need Jesus. I don't want the blood of Jesus to cover my sins. I'll try to be a good boy to get to heaven, or I don't care about Jesus in the first place. It's all the same thing. It's verse 29 from Mark chapter 3. I hope this has cleared up some of your questions, Cooper. And I realize for people who have watched this video, this may have created 50 more questions. I'm not trying to answer every single question that goes along with these two verses because a lot of people have a lot of questions about them. But I do thank verse 28 and verse 29. Answer your two questions very specifically, Cooper. So thanks for sending them in because every honest question deserves an honest answer. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time. God bless.